Hello and welcome. At the end of the second part of this Extreme Lows of Physics video episode, I received a mystery shipment that was supposed to help me reach ever lower temperature. This delivery contained a helium compressor and a cold head. This is in fact a vacuum pump called a cryo pump, which is really an industrial sized cryo cooler. Modern units are capable of reaching temperature as low as a single Kelvin. But this was an eBay find, and this is an older used pump. The compressor runs on 240 volt. It was missing the helium line which I found later, has apparently been sitting around for decades according to the seller, and requires some uh, delicate surgery to operate. Also, these are usually water cooled, so I invested in this uh, water chiller. Its primary function is to trap and condense gases, so it came with its own housing, which I turned into a vacuum chamber. The compressor accepts helium at about 300 psi and needed a small add, but high purity helium is absolutely necessary and you cannot use helium from balloon tanks, as this is only 80% helium. Using it will damage the cold head with nitrogen and oxygen ice and reduce the life of the absorber. Finally, I've installed two thermometers to monitor the cooling of the compressor, coolant in and out. And I thought I was ready to go ahead, crank it on and see what happened. It did not take long to reach minus 100 and I kept track of the temperature to establish a calibration curve for my thermometer. But the water from the chiller heated up pretty fast, so I had to find a way to cool the water cooling the compressor. But overall, this first try was a success and I even got a little bit of liquid nitrogen. I did a poor job at insulating my chamber on the second trial and I also flushed my chamber with helium. This got me down to below minus 200 Celsius and for me, at least, this was a great success. My camera was placed at an angle that did not allow for good visual of the multimeter and I apologize for this oversight. Nevertheless, I was able to reach 13.7 ohm, which is, according to my calibration curve, about minus 224 Celsius. To help the chiller, I've added this uh, copper coil immersed in ice and I then reached minus 228.7 Celsius. On the fourth trial, I got a bit more serious with the insulation and insulated everything, remembering that what I'm trying to do here is a bit like making and keeping ice in an oven. I've used a constant helium flush on this run, and I did get a bit of an unknown liquid that evaporated before I had a chance to record it, or measure its temperature. In order to be absolutely sure of my progress, I wanted a secondary way to measure temperature and a T-type thermocouple could get me the confirmation I was after. Also, the helium purity from a 33-year-old absorber was doubtful at best. Finding its replacement was an impossible task and I simply added a new one. All right, this is uh, May 15th, 2021. Uh, I think it's time to give it a go. The temperature outside is 22 degrees Celsius. Let's see what, uh, how low we can go. After several helium flush and many hours of waiting and monitoring, I finally reached the lowest temperature I was ever able to achieve. The ohm meter read 8.31, which is according to my calibration somewhere around minus 240 degrees Celsius. To cool things efficiently, I had to bring in more ice. And to increase my chances of success and decrease my light bill, I ran my equipment in the cooler time of the day, which is at night. I first wrapped a copper coil around the cooling head and insulated it. With these summer temperature, I've used more ice and waited. And waited. More ice and more waiting. Unfortunately on this one, I was not able to replicate the last run performance. Maybe due to the outside weather, but I still reached 236 below zero. Finally, I opened the chamber to again be greeted with a few drops of an unknown liquid that evaporated too fast for me to measure or film. All right, so this is a trial number six or seven. I'm not sure I lost count, but I want to take advantage of this slightly colder weather to see how low I can get on this run. I had high hope for this run, as I took every precaution with two temperature measuring method, heavy insulation, plenty of ice cooling on the colder night, and a fresh new helium tank. 
Despite my best effort, I could not beat my record, and after two hours stuck at 232 degrees below zero, I finally admitted defeat. This project has already cost me a lot of time and money, and as much as I hate to say so, it's time to move on. This was all done in a very amateurish way because I could not find much on the subject online, but I am sure others can do better. I realized that the T-Type thermocouple is not as good as advertised and becomes completely unreliable below about minus 145 Celsius, from my experience. Or maybe the one I purchased was a cheap piece of crap. The Platinum Probe is a resistance-based measuring device and as such generate its own heat which interferes with low temperature measurement. Also, as mentioned before, Platinum resistance is not linear below 40 to 30 K which is where I was. In conclusion, I'd say that I got to about minus 240 degrees Celsius or about 33 Kelvin, plus or minus six degrees, but even this margin of error has its own margin of error. As for the mystery liquid I found a few times, it probably was air or nitrogen and oxygen condensing on the cold surface of the metal as soon as I opened up the chamber. Measuring temperature this low is tricky as any input of even the slightest heat interfere with the results. Now I would love to drive back down to sunny Ohio and pick up another tank of neon and try this again, but this may be a future follow up on this already very expensive project. Looking back on this whole thing, I reached about 10 to minus 10 tor and about 240 degrees below zero, which is the average temperature on the surface of Triton, Neptune's larger satellite. I enjoy this very challenging project and it really puts in perspective the astonishing accomplishment of the July 1908 first liquefaction of helium. 113 years later, an amateur is still not able to replicate it. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one and thank you for watching. Damn it!